Hello, I'm Janet Marana, the Executive Director of Priests for Life. Welcome to our program. And of course, uh, we're still wearing masks, and I have a little more creative way now of using a mask. <laughs> so I thought I'd show you that. That's what this is around my neck for. And uh, it's just a little more practical than the thing around my ears, and it's easier to use going in and out of the stores. So once again, um, I've gone back into our archives, and I found another great program of our Defending Life series. Uh, this time, co-hosting with me on this show is Father Scott Daniels. Uh, Father Scott uh, spent several years with Priest for Life working full-time. And again, we talked to Cardinal Jeevish. Now, Cardinal Jeevish worked with St. John Paul II in the Vatican went during his pontificate. Um, he was also the uh, Cardinal of Krakow, Poland. And we spoke to him about the pro-life work and the commitment St. John Paul II had to pro-life. And so let's take a look at that program now. Next on Defending Life, hear from the man who knew St. John Paul II the best and what this saint of our time has to say to the pro-life movement. friends and welcome to Defending Life. I'm Janet Morana, the Executive Director of Priest for Life and co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. I'm also a co-host on the EWTN series, The Catholic View for Women. I bring you the personal greetings of our National Director, Father Frank Pavone, and we're pleased to be joined today by Father Scott Daniels. Father, welcome to our program. Thank you once again, Janet. Well, and as always, we like to begin our program That's with right. a prayer from the Pro-Life Reflections for Every Day, written by Father Pavone and available at Priest for Life. For Mark's Gospel, Chapter 5, 19. Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. Reflection. Many pro-life activists have had abortions. They speak up for the children they once killed, and that is part of their healing. Many of those in need of healing begin that journey because their conscience is stirred by those who expose the wounds of abortion. Let us pray. Lord, you inspire those who have found your healing to carry out your mission give fruitfulness to their words and works. Amen. Amen. Well, of course, uh, the man who uh, we're referring to that knew uh, St. John Paul II the best is uh, Cardinal Jeepish, and we had a wonderful opportunity uh, to interview him, and it happened really quite uh, by amazing thing that happened. Uh, Father Pavone uh, literally ran into at the airport, Father Kroll, uh, who recognized Father from EWTN, but came over to him and Father Kroll heads up uh, the John Paul II uh, Foundation here, uh, which is connected to uh, the Be Not Afraid Center they're building over in Krakow. And it just so happened Cardinal Jeevish was coming a few weeks later and he invited us to come to his parish where we could interview Cardinal Jeevish. So, and as you know, mm -hmm. what a privilege that was. And on top of the interview, which we're gonna see our viewers see, he presented Priest for Life. First of all, he, we, he, we dedicated the ministry under the protection of St. John Paul II, but then he gave us this beautiful relic and it's uh, actually, it's a little piece of a cloth of uh, one of his uh, cassocks, but it has the blood that was mm -hmm. taken from him the, the day he, the night he died. Uh, and uh, so this is considered a first class relic. And so, you know, I can't tell you, Father, the emotion we felt to be given such a precious gift like this for us who are working so hard to defend life. Well, you know, Janet, we should uh, encourage Father Frank uh, and parishes to have him come with this relic and uh, speak about his dedication to life and have the faithful venerated. I think That's that right. would be beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, let's see the encouraging things Cardinal Jeebus told us about St. John Paul II mm. and the commitment to the cause for life. Sure. 
I think he understood the importance of family because he did not have his own family. He lost his mother, father, brother, and a sister who he did not know. I think he deeply reflected upon the importance to be part of and to grow up in a normal family. Very early on, he began to study the problems of family and of life. Already as a professor, he began to work with people of like mind, above all with laity, with doctors, and also with priests, as he taught at the University of Lublin in Krakow. Thus, he prepared a book, one that is still very important today, dedicated to young people preparing for marriage and to living the virtue of chastity both before and after marriage and embracing the spirituality of the married life. This book is called Love and Responsibility. The theme was a very timely one. Also, the experience of the Polish people was a terrible one. When communism entered Poland after the war, abortion was introduced very soon after. A terrible practice of open abortions without regard for rights and leading to the destruction of the family and of so many unborn children. He had seen and very acutely experienced the problems regarding family and life, and he began to work against all these forces in Poland, above all against the Marxist government. Having then a clear understanding of these problems, he arrived to Rome. He encountered the same issues in Rome, in the West, and here in America, and he began to work for life. He sought out bishops, priests, and above all the laity, because he said this theme pertained above all to the family, as families can save other families by their own authentic life and convictions, their own natural life, life according to that created and proposed by the Lord. It was thus that he created the Pontifical Council for the Family in Rome, dedicated above all to problems related to marriage and family life, defending life against abortion and also against contraception because for him, contraception was the first step leading to other things, leading to divorce, leading to abortion. Very encouraging, and we're going to hear a lot more from Cardinal Jeebers when we come back right after this break, so stay tuned. Powerful new voices are arising in the debate over abortion, the voices of those who have actually experienced it. From coast to coast, women and men who have lost children to abortion are speaking out about its pain and devastation and about the healing and forgiveness they have found through the pro-life movement. Their witness is changing hearts and minds. Former U.S. Senator Zell Miller writes, The most poignant sight for me at this year's annual pro-life march and demonstration in Washington, D.C., was the large number of women holding signs saying they regretted their abortions. And the United States Supreme Court wrote, It seems unexceptionable to conclude some women come to regret their choice to abort the infant life they once created and sustained. Severe depression and loss of esteem can follow, a decision so fraught with emotional consequence.
Welcome back to our Defending Life program where we have had interview with Cardinal Jeevish, who, as we know, uh, close, works so closely with St. John Paul II. Well, as I was mentioning, uh, one of the projects, uh, the key project here is the Be Not Afraid Center that they're building in Krakow. Uh, and that phrase, Be Not Afraid, Father, right? It's so important to you, isn't it? And to all of us. Yeah, absolutely. As a Christian, but I think most especially uh, where the life issues and abortion are concerned, uh, you know, I've always been convicted that the greatest issue is the life issue. But I'll tell you what, there's a great deal of fear when you think that wells up, you know, when you're going out there and, and defending life, the sneers and the reactions of people on the streets. Right. Uh, I remember when I did the Face the Truth tour in Chicago, it was the scariest moment of my life, but the Lord gave me courage. And I'm thinking about those very words of John Paul. They're true. Be not afraid. Be that's not right. afraid. And that's one thing most people are gonna remember about his papacy, right. those words, be not afraid. When we had the opportunity to interview mm -hmm. Colonel Jeevish, we asked him to tell us more about the Be Not Afraid Center. So let's hear what he had to say. Mm -hmm. Many people come to Krakow from all parts of the world. Tourists, pilgrims, nearly 8 million each year, searching for places related to the Pope, so as to know the culture and the city that created this person, this pontiff. Thus, there was a need to allow people to have the opportunity to know John Paul II, to remember him today, as love for John Paul II is enduring, and to leave, conserve, study, and above all, transmit his great legacy to future generations. Everything he did and left cannot be lost. Above all, this was an extraordinary person a guiding light for people, a secure testimony, now above all confirmed with the canonization that he can be imitated. And that's how the center started. It is a center, but now a sanctuary, as there is now a beautiful, beautiful church. I invite everyone to come and see it. Also, there are places for groups to study, pray, and meet. Most everything is up and going, except the archives, museum, and a place of accommodation for the people. Thus, everything is done, thanks to the generous and good people who knew him, loved him, and desired that there be a place where people could go to still be with him. He died, but he is still present with us in other ways, inspiring and helping us, and many people feel his protection. During his life, if someone asked him for prayer, he never forgot. He often asked his secretary to take note of it, because people often say, I will pray for you, but when he said it, he never forgot it. He was seen as, and was, a man of great prayer, relationship, contemplation, such that his prayer was very efficacious. There were many graces, many miracles during his life and also after his death. Today, we need to remember his words addressed to the youth and to all. Do not be afraid to become saints. For the person who wants to become a saint seeks to be a person close to God, who respects his laws and who respects the Ten Commandments. Today's Gospel says, He who loves me keeps my commandments the Ten Commandments. I mean, now to have a center, you know, over in Krakow, that's going to have 
so much about St. John Paul II that we can go there. Uh, those of us who are able to take a pilgrimage, it's going to be a beautiful place like you know, to, to pray and to, to feel his presence in a deeper way. Mm -hmm. I mean, we always can pray wherever we are to St. John Paul II, exactly. but imagine going to where he you know, uh, was the Cardinal of Krakow and then, and all these things are being gathered there. So I want our viewers to know if they go to our Priest for Life website, priestforlife.org, uh, we're gonna have information if you'd like to be involved in helping support the foundation, which is helping with this center in this small ways. We all can be involved to help this Be Not Afraid Center come to completion. Uh, and I know there's a target to get it all finished uh, before World Youth Day happens in, in Poland. So that's kind of like a, a timeline there now, that, that we're up against. Now this center is going to have a shrine and church, right? Yes, it is. Okay. And it's going to be beautiful. And it's actually right mm -hmm. next to the shrine that already exists uh, to uh, St. Faustina. So uh, the two of them, two, both things are going to be side by side. It's going to be amazing. So I'm yeah. hoping God will uh, give me a way of getting to Krakow soon, too, because I, I would love to see it. Yeah. Well, you know, Father Scott, thank you so much. But we're going to come back. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, right after this message, we're going to take questions from you, our viewers. And to end this program, we're going to have words of encouragement that Cardinal Jeebus gave us to you, those who work in the vineyard in the pro-life movement. So stay tuned. One of the most important things we do in the pro-life movement is to pray. And one of the most popular pro-life prayer books is In the Palm of His Hand, written by Father Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life. Now we are pleased to offer a revised version of this popular prayer book containing brand new prayers and litanies that Father Frank has written to correspond to various liturgical seasons and feasts. You will also find pro-life rosary reflections, pro-life litany, and pro-life prayers for Eucharist adoration, and for prayer vigils at abortion mills, and much more. This devotional tool is great for personal family and parish use. Bulk pricing is also available for churches, prayer groups, and schools. Contact Priests for Life at our toll-free number, 888-735-3448. Four, eight, or go online to ProLifeProducts.org to order in the palm of his hand. Thank you. Welcome back to our Defending Life program where we take a question now from you, our viewers. Well, Father Scott, today's question comes from Stephen from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and he writes, What is Priest for Life planning to do in upcoming elections? How can I help? Stephen, thank you for your question. The subject of political responsibility and involvement in elections is one that we deal with frequently on these programs, and that Priests for Life gives a lot of attention to in its activities all year long, whether it's an election year or not. We conduct nonpartisan activities such as voter registration and voter education drives, and even organize a coalition of other groups structured like ours to help them do the same. This is called the Vote Pro-Life Coalition. And you can find more information at VoteProLifeCoalition.com. One of the things we consider to be most important and that we are giving renewed emphasis to is to educate pastors and everyone else on the fact that we are far freer to speak and act regarding elections than we are led to think. We have started an educational series in our writings and on YouTube called Politics and the Pulpit. In this series, we take a look at what is known as the Johnson Amendment. Without any legislative history or debate, this amendment was added to the tax code in 1954, motivated by the political ambitions of a single individual. This amendment, which was not originally aimed at churches anyway, indicates that tax-exempt organizations cannot intervene in a political race. But the meaning of intervention in a political race is so vague as to be unconstitutional. And the IRS, not held in very high esteem in America for its objectivity, interprets this phrase in a very far more restrictive way than the law itself requires. My friends, both the First Amendment to the Constitution as well as the teachings of the Catholic Church indicate that we as believers and as pastors must always be supremely free to declare the truth about the demands of the moral law, even in matters of politics. So expect to hear a lot more about this from us and check out our resources online 
at politicalresponsibility.com. My friends, anytime you have a question for our Priest for Life team, just go to ProLifeQuestions.com and we will respond to you. That's very important. Mm -hmm. And as you know, uh, we were just so privileged, as we said, to have these interviews with Cornel Jeevish. And I find uh, so encouraging. The final thing, we asked him, what would he like to say uh, to the pro-life movement, those of us all over the world who work so hard uh, in trying to end abortion in our country, in our neighborhood, you know, whatever we're trying to do. So many of us get in you know, discouraged. And of course, we know uh, we all look to St. John Paul II. We pray to him for, his, for to help give us the courage we need. So let's see what Cardinal Jeebers gave his special message to our brothers and sisters there in the vineyard working in pro-life. Courage. Courage. Go forward together. Courage for families and for all those who work for family and for life. Do not be afraid. We must be convinced that here we are defending the law of the Lord. Because these attacks against family and life are against God, against the law of the Lord, against the Creator. We must have sure confidence that the Lord will help us and the truth will triumph. The truth of the family will triumph because to destroy the family is to destroy civilization and also the civilization of love. Well, I think I feel a lot better now <laughs> hearing those words, uh, basically giving us that encouragement, blessing our work. Don't you too, Father? Indeed. And, you know, it, it's very encouraging, too. I mean, those are not empty words. Pope St. John Paul II was a great saint. His faith was incredible. That's right. So we trust and pray to God through his intercession to help us in our endeavors in the pro-life movement. Yeah, and when you think about it, you know, he was raised in Poland mm. during the communism and all that, and he lived those words, be not afraid, in his childhood, in his priesthood, and, and so on. And so, you know, we, we really have to believe, like he did, that if you have that that attitude, be not afraid, things will change. Who ever thought communism would fall in Poland? Exactly. And it did. it did. It was that deep, deep faith of the Polish people. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, thanks again for a wonderful program. You're I welcome. know this was a great privilege, and we had our relic here uh, mm -hmm. blessing us for this program, a, a great privilege. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you too for joining us on Defending Life. And remember, we also have a Spanish version of this program on EWTN's Spanish channel. Before we go, let me offer you three items. First, if you have children or grandchildren who do not practice the faith, let me send you a short brochure that Father Frank Pavone has written just for you. It contains 10 points that will guide you about what to do, what to say, and how to pray, and how to be reassured in this situation. Ask for the brochure, my children don't practice the faith, what should I do? Second. We at Priest for Life have prepared a special prayer card to St. John Paul II, the Pope of Life. Use this for yourself and also share it with your whole parish family and you can order it in large quantities. And third, don't forget to ask us for your supply of Priest for Life mass cards for the living and the deceased. And remember, you can invite Father Pavone, Father Wild, myself, and other members of our Priest for Life team, like Dr. Alveda King of our African American Outreach, Brian Kemper of our Stand True Youth Outreach, to your churches, communities, and pro-life events. Check out our website for details at priestforlife.org. And on behalf of Father Pavone, our National Director, and all our Priest for Life family, I urge you, let us hear from you. Send us your success stories or your questions and comments. Please connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and more. See priestforlife.org for the links to these and other platforms. And remember, 
There are some abortions only you can stop, some lives only you can save. Join us again next week on Defending Life. I hope you enjoyed that program. And if you saw it during that program, especially near the end, I offered a lot of resources. Uh, the one brochure, my, my children don't practice the faith anymore. Uh, and then I think we offered also uh, Father Pavone's book, Abolishing Abortion, uh, which is a great thing to read now during this election cycle. Uh, another little prayer book we offered was In the Palm of His Hand. Again, beautiful resource. So if you are interested in these resources, you can just uh, send us an email at orders at priestsforlife.org or go to our, our store, our online store at prolifeproducts.org. And also too, we mentioned our mass cards for the living and the deceased. Those also are great resources. Now near the end of the program, I, I asked uh, uh, Father Scott a question and it had to do with the election. And you might be wondering, well, gee, you know, what are, we, what are you guys doing at Priests for Life? Well, we're fully engaged in this election because it is so, so important. Uh, and you might have been disappointed last week in that a Louisiana case was struck down. Uh, you could say we lost. And I hope you understand how important app appointments to the Supreme Court are. Now, uh, President Trump's two uh, appointees, uh, Gorsuch and uh, Kavanaugh, they voted with the pro-life uh, movement. Uh, but you can see how we still need a, another justice or two to really get things swung in our direction. So that's why this election, we need President Trump for four more years so we can elect, uh, you know, we can, he can appoint uh, more uh, justices, hopefully to the Supreme Court, because two of the really pro-abortion justices, Breyer and Ginsburg, are well into their 80s. Uh, so it's feasible in the next uh, four years during another Trump administration, we can have one or two more vacancies to fill. So that election is very, very important, and we need you. We have a full-time staff person. His name is Byron White. He held, heads up our political outreach, and we want to invite you to be part of our team. Please go to ProLifeVolunteer.com. Fill out that form. Again, it's ProLifeVolunteer.com. Fill it out. Byron will be in touch with you, and Father Pavone and I and Byron, we have weekly uh, Zoom calls every Wednesday evening, uh, and we cover a lot of different topics and practical things you can do from your own home, at your own computer, within the people you know to get prepared for this election. So again, Father Frank and I really need you, so go to ProLifeVolunteer.com. Sign up today. Thank you for joining us, and God bless.